Welcome back, everyone, to the ESL ESEA Pro League. I'm Lee Man Smith. I'm joined once again by Lauren Pansy Scott for TSM versus Penta. Now, well, where do we start with this one? This is going to be a tricky one, no doubt about it, for Penta. It's on Mirage, uh, and that's kind of a good map for TSM, which doesn't bode so well for Penta, who did just, uh, I'd say, they got 10 rounds against Virtus Pro. But I think they were gifted some of those. Yeah, this this should not be a uh, close game. But it's it's more about once again TSM and keeping clean games. They haven't played that much within this league recently. They're gonna have to catch up in a couple of games, I can imagine soon. Um, or not as many as other teams. That's the thing. That's probably why you're not seeing that the higher echelons just yet on the leaderboard. But um, they're a top team regardless, so they should be able to get themselves up there. And this should be a game they'll get a clean result well, on. For TSM, they, they just need to get some wins, frankly, because they had that one bad day where they lost three games yep. in one night on the Pro League. And that's what put them in trouble. Well, they're starting things off with the opening for Ag Crystal. Will go down troubly. Oh, he had a free shot in Dupree, and he didn't manage to make it. Cajun B come out in the end. Pushed up, covered him off. Tabs on the last man. Not able to be the hero this time around, I don't think. And that was a simple pistol round for TSM. A little too easy, in fact. That was a bit scary. Well, at least rather than just committing the bomb towards B, then they actually tried to rotate them um, off back towards A to do pre-game hopping out. But, yeah, this is this is going to be a real bloodbath. You know, considering TSM are on the verge of being a you know, top-tier... <laughs> a top-tier team, should I say. Um... This won't be pretty for Penta, considering they're just trying to work through their issues more than anything, and they're getting some really tough t opponents today. But maybe Penta can get a couple of rounds here and there, make it harder work for TSM, and bring this you know league closer together all in all. When they're playing in the top leagues, they're going to play against the best teams, and Trouble realizes he's got a lot of people up there. He's going to try and push through. They're trying to catch them by surprise with the pistols, but TSM not falling for it. Simple MAC-10 close work there. Crystal's going to... Try and catch Carrigan out. Carrigan up in Delpan, but he himself gets himself a kill. Strux is going to get chased down. He gets dropped by Device. And well, Cajun be the only man to fall so far for TSM as they close out a very simple second round. And they're just not losing players either. Penta have only managed <clears throat> two kills so far. Um, <laughs> it's, it's hard to make an impact. You know, TSM are a confident team. You saw their first pistol straight up mid. Uh, a little bit of a split at the end, and then just took the bomb over towards eight. Second round, just straight out on eight, doing the damage, and then Carrigan in mid. Carrigan opting to stick with the SMG in round three. And why not? Penta have no armor and nothing to work with, but they're going at a stack. So this might maybe at least get Penta a couple more kills. Yeah, going to be five man in it. And TSM are running headlong into it. Maybe this could work out for them, but they got to get those opening shots, those opening frags. There it is. Tapson does manage to get Cajun B down. With little USP work, but sadly for them, they're dropping straight in there. Are they going to expect Strux? Oh, he had to make it count. He got the pre. So they got themselves two kills, but that's, you got to really hope for more when you stack out of sight with five men. Yeah, well, at least they got two more kills. That's good. So, <laughs> this is hard. This is this hard. Is hard. This is casting a hard level when you know it is such a one-sided match. Because, I, okay, this is, this is going to be defining how much of a dent can Penta make on the buy round. They have to do it. They're on the preferential side, arguable, but still, we're going to go with it for now. Now they need to make an impact. They cannot let TSM just run all over them, which they've been doing so far. TSM haven't even done much. They've just gone for a standard play and then just landed the shots. They haven't played complex. They haven't played this, you know, superior mind game of wonder. It's just, hey, guys, we're just going to walk into your sights and kill all of you. And they're pretty much doing the same thing here. But now Stavros does some damage. This is much better. But then there's a reply, and it's a two-for-one, and they've broken through the site. They haven't even put the smokes down. They're just walking straight in, and sadly, Penda just don't seem to have an answer to it just yet. It's just pure confidence. It's a team that just knows they are superior right now, and that's that's how it should be. And you know you're in trouble when you're picking up a dead man's M4 that has four bullets on a silenced version of it. So let's see if Tabson and Strux can get back into the side. Not checking where Zipnix is is going to make it harder work. And now Strux 1v2. He's not going to really have much luck. He's got two so far. That Molly's going to keep him out. Not going to be able to get on site. He's going to keep hold of it, or he hopes he can, because Strux is going looking for him. He may well just find him. He's going to hold the angle in the corner. 
Is Zipnik's going to check? No, he's not. Strux will get him down. So round for TSM. Small victory for Strux. Yeah, getting a lot of guns away from TSM as well. But as I was saying, you know, TSM didn't even do a full execute then. They just kind of went, all right, let's go to the site. They came out. Yeah, okay, they got a little bit of trouble coming in from the, I think it was um, Stavros who picked up the first. But from that point on, they just look so confident. As I said, Penta need to break that somehow. Um, they're going to get a small purchase going with CZs. Nothing crazy on the CT side. Just to maybe give Strux a little bit of support, if anything. But nice flash comes oh, across. And TSM straight out. Cajun B, Dupree. It's like deathmatch for these boys yeah. right now. And, and I wish it wasn't. I want to see more, but I don't oh. think I will do. Oh. Straight at ramp. They, they didn't even hang around. They just flashed out, ran straight this out. This might be the fastest game we've ever seen at this well, point. Well, it's going to catch us back up on time. Maybe TSM just like warming up. This is like this is a warm-up match. They are playing Fnatic next. So they have to make sure they have their uh, heads straight when they get to that match. But a little, little, little bit of aim practice, a little bit of deathmatch for them. Coming into it. Well, this is very different. Trouble with the Scar 20. Crystal with the Orb. This is all in for them. It has to be a round they can win. So where are they putting that Scar? So Scar's at the back. So the Scar is on A. Crystal mm -hmm. with the Orb's on B. And we've got the 3-2 split looking like it's going to work towards A. Last time TSM did this, that's where they ended up. But maybe they're going to actually go for an execute this time. Maybe they're going to put those smokes in play. Maybe they're going to have to do a little bit more because Stavros is in a great little spot. I love I love playing that in dark just to make a little bit of a peek towards Tetris. But Penta slowing down TSM. Making them worth this one minute left, though. Let's see, let's see how they take this. I want to see almost from TSM's perspective half the time. But Tabson is in a good spot here. Cajun B unaware of him quite in window. Tabson... Just up in ladder room now, waiting for his opportunity. But Dupree snuck through towards connector. This could be a problem. Strux isn't aware of it, and no one's really watching us. There's no one in jungle for Penta. They can walk straight in. Trouble finds device, but look at Dupree. He's pretty much gone on to site scot free. He's behind them. He's got around behind them. Trouble he gets caught out. He managed to get Zipnix down, but as you say, Dupree just strolled in the back there through connector. Strux hasn't been yet to be spotted. Does manage to get Carrigan off. They know that he's in sandwich now. Cajun B going to come around, but Cajun B should see Crystal around the side. There he is. And now it is just Strux. And he knows the angle is covered off. That's why Cajun B is just holding it. Both of them covering this with a great little crossfire position. Tries to go for the little fake. And they know, they know. Dupree's just going to step around. There we go. And that's going to be the sixth round on the board. Yeah, and the observer's oh, points now at Crystal. Crystal. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a good game for him yet. Almost getting to James Bond. But then again, he's never been quite in the right place at the right time when he's had a gun. You know, the AWP, he took it to B. He left uh, the order sniper on towards A. He's been struggling a little bit to have that earlier action. And the one thing I'd say is, though, Penta had absolutely no mid control in. They kind of, they, they, they almost did in ladder room. They almost had that good control, but then they just kind of gave it up. So Crystal gets a spot of one there. So they should know at least one person's probably by there. But look how quick Kerrigan is up towards Connector. He's straight he's up. He's through. He's gone. He's, he's, he's so confident. He knows <laughs> oh, another Mac peeking. 10. The Mac Daddy comes to play. He goes for the upgrade. He gets it. And the rest of TSM start holding in. Trouble, though, in a good position here. The bomb's still in spawn. Might be able to do something. I think Kerrigan thought he was playing gun game there. Just collecting up the new gun every time he goes through. Trouble, not going to quite get himself the frag on Zipnix. But this is down to a 2 on 3. This is Penta's first good chance. Now it's a 2 on 2. Tapson low on health. Uh, sorry, Strux low on health. Both covering off from Connector. Cajun B, the man, smoked off at the moment. But the second that smoke clears, that AWP is going to be booming. Zipnix spotted. Drops in towards Sandwich. Will get spotted out. Oh, he's right in the open. And that was a little cocky play from Cajun B. First round for Penta, but it is 6-1. Come back, some boys. Here we go. <laughs> um, mate, hey, that was well played out by Penta, to be fair. It was incredible, the fact that Carrigan got up connector, completely unscathed, pushed jungle, took down window. But then they didn't really get much else out of it. I think the players at ramp probably just got a little bit challenged for once, which is good. It's good to see. And Crystal having a great spawn here. I wonder if he's going to try and just peek ramp, or is he going to take this with the AWP? Well, he's on a 007 at the moment, so he's hoping he he's goes somewhere. straight towards... There's no one there. Yeah. Carrigan actually ca trouble pushing deep here. He's going to catch Carrigan out, and that's the bomb! There's the bomb been found. Now, if everyone can get in position to try and cover this one off, stop Zipnix getting near it. Stavros already ready for the push up through connector. Zipnix is trying to get around there. 
It's almost not worth pushing up for that bomb, though. You're at such a disadvantage. There's so much higher ground the T's can get. But the problem is now that those two players in mid had completely free reign to add pressure towards Connector. Do pre and Cajun B coming through are finally being dealt with by Tabson and Strux. Cajun B still there. Doesn't expect Tabson. He comes into play. But now we're down to that 2v3. 55 seconds. Device and Zipnix. Crystal's in a good spot. He can always come around and support from the back. But. Trouble has to hold on here. Tabson's had to go back towards B because they're buying so much time. And you can see this slow play come out from Device now. Yeah, and Crystal needs to make tracks. Now he knows they're there. Now he's running. Now he's sprinting up behind them. But Trouble just needs to delay. He's been taken down. Zip this has to be through. Crystal's round now. Crystal's in a perfect spot to cause so many problems. They're not expecting him. They're not even looking his way. Tabson's going to distract them. Oh, well, he's going to go straight for the first shot. Tabson comes around. And they will pick up the round. So Penta get themselves a second on the board. All started off with that aggressive play, catching Carrigan with the bomb. Yeah, and it's 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 important to get the bomb down. Don't get me wrong, because then you can you know, put players on the right side. But when it's that far into almost the T's territory, you don't want to kind of over push because there were those two players in mid that can push around the back of you. So you lose complete control off towards A. So I'm kind of glad the Penta didn't over commit just to try and cover off that bomb. But regardless now, let's see what TSM do. They're, they're going to start looking a little bit worse for wear for money as they've just lost two rounds back to back almost. So looking at this here, Device Dupree looking towards B around the back. Nothing too much committed. Smoke towards short possibly from Carrigan coming out. And that could just entail they want to get some control over towards mid, be able to peek freely towards Connector and allow Dupree a little bit more control. But look at this. Device and tabs and centimeters apart. Yeah, they were just actually in the smoke right next to each other as well. Oh, Dupree should not have come out on top of that one. Trouble losing out in a battle he thought he'd had. And that immediately triggers things off. Look at tier 7. Three members piling through connector. But Stavros cuts them down, gets two down. And that's his job done. Oh, that grenade from Crystal almost on point. Strux is the one that picked up the kill. Zipnik's low. The last man for TSM. This could be the third round on the board for Penta. After what was a commanding start for TSM going six rounds without reply, without anything really from Penta, suddenly Penta woke up. Crystal getting him back into the game, but I, I think this is just TSM trying the same things over and over, not working out and not being too fussed about it. I know that sounds bad, but yeah. as the match is paused, we can kind of discuss what was happening at the start. TSM were so dominant. They, they weren't doing your know, standard standard plays. They weren't just going for you know, the set smokes. They were just playing almost off feel, off confidence, and it worked. There was very few times a player in towards jungle, towards the A site, to ever make any impact. So players coming through mid had free reign. And we saw that time and time again. Finally, we're starting to see Stavros be there, and then later into the game, if needed, Strux. And it's working out wonderfully for Penta. And even Strux and Stavros are the two players starting to look towards the top of the table. And that's a big difference coming out from the start to those last couple of rounds. And I, I'm pretty sure TSM could go back to a full execute you know, towards the site after this eco they're probably going to be on. Maybe you know, a couple of deagles here and there. But all in all, it's, it's going to be hard, I feel, for Penta still to find another level to go to. Yeah, they haven't even tried a, a set smoke play or anything like that. They've not really gone for a B play either. So... As you mentioned, TSM just been kind of piling in mm. <laughs> towards A-site. Just uh, expecting their straightforward skills to work. And they were. They were in the first six rounds. So, TSM. I didn't see actually who called the pause. Um, can't see who it is. So, uh, it may have been Penta. Penta was like, you know what, guys? We could pick up a couple more rounds here. But six rounds is already not a bad start for TSM. You've got to expect them to get at least another two. Ooh, bless me. Penta, though. Crystal, with the AWP in hand, did manage to get his two kills. That was the important thing. He was 0, zero 7 Got himself on the board. So, TSM had a little talk, a little debate. Decided to go with a couple of Deagles, the Tech-9, and they're all piling up the mid. Uh, it's almost like the first pistol round. This time, though, there's a team with guns against them. It should be a lot harder to do. Unless you do pre, and then maybe it's not. Crystal goes down to the Juan Deag. And, well, this is starting to look a little bit... A little, a little bit awkward. Hopefully they don't die, and hopefully strikes cut. Oh, oh God. Dear. That, the orb must have dropped through the window. Oh, that's actually oh. gutting. That's really unfortunate. And oh, he spotted Trouble then. Trouble Smiley just about crouching below that shot. But TSM, even being able to just take away the orb, is a big impact towards Penta here. Yeah, and then TSM immediately backed off. It's like, all right, 
We got an ult. Let's just slow things down. Looks like they're going to go for the rotate. And it's actually causing Penta to second guess himself. Tapson's been left alone over on B site. Probably on the rotate to A. And we can see TSM, of course, making their way through the spawn. Stavros actually in position. May catch them by surprise with that smoke going down to fool them into looking to the other corner. Well, hopefully Zipnix gets his gun out. Now he does, crouching into position, but he, he at least spots where it is, and he can buy time for Tabson to come across. Nicely done from Stavros there. A little bit of a pop flash in. Going to catch out Zipnix, at least on the corner, but will he expect the second? He doesn't matter! Cajun B goes down without a scathing mark towards Stavros, and now Zipnix needs to be the one to deliver. Oh. He will, but now 1v2. He's up against it, but he's still what? going at it! Zipnix! <laughs> Unbelievable, but will he work out where Tabson is? Tabson? has been over by B and on short, so it wouldn't be a stretch for Zipnix to look straight towards this. You can see the shots over by the stairs. Oh, oh and Zipnix beautifully played. The game sense came into practice four kills that round, and that's just individual skill and knowledge you don't get every day. Steals away the orb and just beats them with it. And more importantly, those two shots when he just pushed through onto a side, which is P250s. It's a long range, don't need the orb. Pop him off, long range, no problem. 7-3, TSM. Clearly the pause worked out well. I'm not quite sure that's what they were discussing in the pause, but a uh, little individual skill coming out from Zitnix to try and check on ramp. Meanwhile, we've got a boost here. Carrigan didn't see who he was boosting up. Zitnix will get himself the kill on Trouble. It was Device, actually, that was boosted over the smoke with the orb. Look at this control from TSM. I, I just... I look at the map. You can see on the mini-map, they're taking over so much of the map for free, and Penta just, just can't seem to find the angles to get guns away or find a 1v1. It's always a 1v8, you know. Round, uh, Dupree picking up four, but there was no really armor on Penta. There's not much to be said about it, yeah. but this round is going to be important now. Um, you want to start looking towards maybe four or five rounds for Penta on the CT side, something they can actually work with going into their T side, but it's still not going to be much. No, TSM. Well, they're formerly renowned for having a very, very good CT side. And that's, uh, like you say, that's, that's, that's the scary part. 16-3 the score was last time they faced each other on Inferno. Well, Penta have got those three rounds. Oh, that's a nice Kind one. of improving. Is this that is a ledge or a boost? No, I think he's on, he's on Carrigan. He's on Carrigan, yeah. He's boosted on Carrigan. This is what he did last round. This time, it doesn't look like Crystal wants to have any of it. That's really nice, actually. So, smoking short themselves to give them that little bit of a a peek and then utilizing the boost to look over. That's really nice. Um, doesn't give them anything, but it's nice. And now let's see what they can do. Jesus, Crystal a centimeter away from death then. You can see the hole in the wall. <laughs> and this will allow Dupree to sneak up towards Connector again. Stavros unaware. No one in jungle. This is something I said earlier that was a real issue that started to haunt them a bit. And Cajun B will take down Crystal in window and that's going to leave it even more open. Oh, TSM. Actually though, looking at the B-bomb site here. Carrigan mm. and Device heading over, and there is still Tabson. We know that guy can do wonders sometimes. And Molly's just going to be to the left of him. It should be okay. Gives him the information. The rotate's coming out, but Dupree is ready and waiting for it. Tries to catch Stavros off. Does get him down. And that was Tabson also taken out on site. So now Bomb Plant coming in. Carrigan is going to get the plant down. Dupree, while well, he's doing work, isn't he, over here? Strux will come around the back of him. But that may well be all he gets as they chase him down on short. Three members, four members of TSM all coming his way. Are they going to leap up? Oh, a little bit of too aggressive from Carrigan, but Device will finish the job. And 9-3 the score for TSM. And the money for the CTs is dire. We've got a 5-7, a P250. What else can they spend for under $300 in game? Um... Oh, and that's it. Two P oh, no, no, we did get the P250s. All right, so we got some P250s here. They Maybe stay? they can actually make an impact. No. So far, they've been struggling, really, to get even a gun out. Just because the way TSM seemed to play, and look at this, device just straight up, straight up confident. Just going through the smoke, peeks it at the top, sees if anyone's, like, mm. holding the angle, and then goes straight in. Dupree, confident. Carrigan, confident. And you can see why. Just the perfect readjustment. And once again, Penta struggling to get those guns away, or... Even just make a presence on these eco rounds. They're just not in the right place, in the right time. They're getting bullied here. Stavros tried the aggressive push on A ramp as well, and Zipnix just sat back waiting for him. He's like, you've done this a few too many times, I'm afraid. We know you're on the pistols. 10-3 the score, match pause. I'm pretty sure it's called out by Penta this time around. Solid, solid 
start for TSM. 6-0 to zero was the start. And now, of course, they are starting to clock themselves another four. Just that little patch of three rounds for Penta. TSM just to adjust themselves and get straight back in there. Looking at the scoreboard, well, is Dupree leading the frags with 19, Zipnik's at 14. 14 for Strux as well. Strux has been a little glimmer of hope for Penta. But uh, I don't think we can read too much into the kills because TSM have just been piling through. It's a case of who can find the first enemy. Yeah, and looking even at Penta's previous results, they're not, they've not had the best of runs, really. They've had quite some tough opponents. Dignitas for one, Fnatic, Virtus Pro. You throw in G-Play, who they lost to as well on Mirage. Really for Penta, they've never had that time to settle into this roster and get everything working the way they wanted. As, they, as we said before at the start of the season, they had to kind of pull themselves together from what was left of what Mouse Sports pillaged. Um, and they've done nicely. That's a good, well-rounded lineup. It's, it's not a bad lineup at all. Crystal is very talented. But, and, and so are the others, bearing in mind. But it's, it's a long way off from being able to challenge the likes of TSM and the bigger boys in this league. That's the thing when, as you said, you get the big leagues, you get the big teams. There's probably going to be a team that's kind of in an awkward predicament because they're on the cusp of being good, but just not quite there yet. Yeah, but they, they had the misfortune of it all happening on the first day of the season. Yeah. Uh, so they didn't even have uh, just, a, just a week or two or just a little while to buy themselves some time, get a little practice, warm up a little bit, and then gently bring themselves back into it. They were thrust straight into the big matches. They did get their first win, though, remember, in that first match over Mouse Sports, ironically. But if you to look at the two differences, Mouse Sports yeah. have gone on week after week, improved. Oh, God, you're burning, man. Move, Crystal. Oof. Down to 15 health. Crystal's having a really bad time, bless him. <laughs> I mean, he was going, he's gone complete glass cannon, and now he's just got nothing. Nothing left with that AWP. That was an on-point molly for TSM there. 10-3 in score. As they go peaking. Strux is trying to actually get a glimmer around there. Device is actually pushing. Strux is going to catch him out. So, caught him unawares there. Crystal also, meanwhile... Managed to land the shot in Carrigan, so they've got themselves two kills there. They've got themselves the man advantage. And it's maybe Stavros that may catch them off guard coming from behind here. He's got to do something big because the bomb is going down. He's going to choose Tetris first, go for plant, and then follows oh, up beautiful. towards CT. That is perfect from Stavros. <clears throat> he had to do it, and he did. That made everything change for Penta. As we were saying, the individuals are fine. It's everything else. When TSM goes towards their team elements, when they fall back on... You know, the strategies and the deeper plays. Sally Pender aren't quite there yet, but look at this from Stavros. He just played it textbook. Slightly slow. You can see the adjustment just here. Perfect towards Dupree. And I'm really glad to see him actually being able to, you know, achieve those sort of, uh, you know, situations. But probably feeling confident. Going to go straight mm. up mid. This is uh, Leaf out of a couple of other teams' books, but. Ooh. Actually, catching Cajun B very low. That nade could do well if it's not too deep. It's not. Trobly takes down Cajun B. That is the AWP out of play and not retrievable for some time. Kerrigan might have to try and go back for it, but TSM pushing out into no man's land. This has got to be 10-5, surely. The way Pentra are playing, Kerrigan, the last man, will manage to spray down Strux. That smoke will slow things down, but he immediately gets flashed. Look at that. They're trying to cover him off. They knew where he was. And Crystal does get himself... A confident, confident round on the board. Nice, nice. Ooh. We're over here, guys. Wow, <laughs> we're, we're showing you the whole studio today. It's it's like uh, you know MTV Cribs. Just, just look around. <laughs> MTV Check Cribs. Is that even still going? Oh yeah, beautiful, beautiful. I like it. I like it. That's PC MTV two. Cribs, right? No, 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 there. that's PC two with that little little song in the background. The uh, Windows jingle. like uh, package song. It's uh, <laughs> did you know? <laughs> <laughs> Our producer hates us right now. He it's absolutely okay. hates us. Basically, everything went wrong <laughs> that could go cool. wrong. Pistol it's round cool. about to get in the way. We'll get back into the game in just a moment, guys. As Don't worry, you're not missing ready. anything. But overall, 10-5, TSM solid T-side. No doubt about it. Yeah, so we, that's, what we that's the thing. It's, it's a T-side. Penta did okay. Five rounds isn't the worst in the world for their team. But... You know, they're going to have to pull something together here. You know, they have to turn up for... Your know, Pender needs to just kind of push themselves out a little step further. But we are back into it. You didn't miss a single thing. So do not fear. Do not complain. Um, well, let's just see what Pender can do. This is this is the difference here. Because overall, that's not an awful half for Pender. It's not the end of the world. They've got enough rounds as a buffer. <clears throat> but can they now push TSM on their CT side? Something that TSM have been generally quite good at. Very good. 
Third time of asking, just that's that one tap headshot. We'll get taken down. Crystal device replying. Device going with his jewelies. Cajun B's going to push around. I'm pretty sure he got a glimpse of Strux wow. just outside of the smoke. Are they surely going to cross each other? They have. He, he's, he's just to the left of him. Hasn't even looked. I mean, why would you? And Strux is just like, this is a bit weird. <laughs> Catches him out. Zipnix making his way back, though. Strux is going to get the plant down. Device on the rotate. We'll get caught out by Stavros. And now Zipnix all on his own coming from apartments. But I don't know if they're going to expect Zipnix here. Mm. I'm not sure they might do. I don't know how much information he gave away early on, but... He's checking out. He could be caught here as soon as he drops. We'll wait and see. One in kitchen. Spots him. And now it's down to Strux on nice. the side. Stavros then came into play. And the important factor there when Strux pushed through is he, he held it long enough to see if he could get any other information. Speak to his teammates. Say, okay, if I take this down, guy down instantly, expect the rotate from A. Wait in towards the window room. And then we'll just have to deal with last man standing, which was Zipnix. Which they did. So all in all, smart play from Penta. That was really good. 30, 30 kills between Strux and Stavros. They are... Doing very well, enjoying themselves on this map. They just need to rustle up the rest of their team. But we've seen double scouts coming out from TSM. Carrigan and Cajun B. Carrigan. Cajun B. He's holding window. Debris up close and personal. Will get taken down by Trouble with the MP9. And TSM has smoked out of the site quite completely. You can see how much Penta are putting into these rounds. They're heavily invested, even though it's round two. And Device tries to sneak in. Strzok says no. And TSM shouldn't be able to do any damage here if they play it out correctly for Penta. And, well, I think TSM realized that. Yeah. Cajun Beach is going to smoke himself away. Keep hold of those double scouts. It's a tricky angle. Strux is not going to quite get a glimmer on the back of the head there of Cajun B as they back away. And they're actually going to double jump themselves up and away. Strux is not going to quite catch them. Carrigan will spin around. But now they know where they are. And if you were to look at the minimap, absolutely everybody from Penta is closing in on the direction. Oh. Tabson gets one. Cajun gets the exchange. And I think Cajun should be able to get out of this unless mm. he gets spammed on the wall. Hey, he's fine. So that was quite quite lucky always for Cajun B to get out of there in that situation. But um, looking at the economy as well, you can see why they wanted to keep that in play. They don't have much else to work with. And even do pre buying a P250 is put him on 1.6, which is quite low. Um, device doing the same thing. So not sure what they want to achieve with this one. Looking on the other side, though, still sticking with two of the SMG style uh, weapons being picked up. The MAC-10 in there, still with Crystal. I wonder if Penta work out. I wonder if Penta are just going to maybe like go how TSM did at the start and just try speed, see if they can try their shock and awe maybe. Well, I don't think they can into some of these rounds because I don't know how aware they're going to be of TSM's economy the whole way through. Mm. The one thing I'll say about God B when he was playing, he just seemed perfectly aware of how the oppositions were. You know, every every single time Envy had a gun round, an eco, a, you know, a bit of a force buy. So in tune with it. I'm not sure if Penta quite have that yet. So far, this slow play seems indicative of them just wanting to find out what they've got, where Cajun B is. Where have they put him? Do they have anything with it? Did they buy up, you know, a little bit here and there? What are they working with? So a lot slower from Penta. Carrigan going looking for Tabson. He finds him. His legs got spotted by Stavros when he made the drop as well out of window. Probably this time is going to peak. I'm not too... Oh, he's short. Just caught the nub of the pistol peeking out so he knows that device is around the corner well he knows that somebody is around the corner he's sad he's going to be wise and flash himself around the corner they know he's in the corner and now he's got support pushing through on towards site here debris over at stairs going to get caught off trouble he will manage to catch him device has gone all the way through apartments hears him. yeah catches him out and this is all going penta's way a clean round for them very well played penta. not over yet no, it's certainly not. But this is the gun round. This is the important one now. Let's see what TS can do. TSM can do on their buy up here. Penta against a fully bought up team. Not the best buy in the world, but close enough to to a degree. You know, a fair about amount of utility. They've got enough smokes, a couple of flashes. Um, nothing crazy. It's not. It's not the full flush kind of um, perfect purchase. But TSM can work with this. Look at Device just trying to use the smoke towards a ramp. But now Zipnix is probably going to be the one under a fair bit of pressure here. He's got two players, smokes it out. Nades come in, doesn't actually land on him. That's quite important there. Carrigan and Device already falling back into sort of supporting positions. But that bomb's at the top Ooh. of mid, and that spray was just somehow so perfectly on Strux. Yeah, it just jacks him straight down to 24 health. Carrigan 
Covering off short. Stavros is the man that's making his way underneath, though. There's no one actually covering off from window. Carrigan's looking across the short, but not one person is looking at uh, underpass. The mid is completely in control of Penta right now. Yeah, and I think TSM just lost a player, which isn't good. Yeah, somebody's dropped. Okay, I'm not going mad. That's that's good. I'm glad that I'm not going mad, but as you said, Penta's taking control of mid, starting to work their up towards A. Dupree and Device still there, Carrigan not far off. They should be able to still kind of cover this. Four of them stacked in connector right now. It's dangerous. If, if someone gets an idea of this, and Dupree's going to spot them, waits it out, calls to Carrigan, Carrigan comes in, and it's dangerous doing these all-in plays like this when you haven't even checked the site, and now last man gets cleaned up, and they just didn't seem to have a plan beyond that. Well, four members or not, they cleaned that one up. That was so easy. The four members all stacking in the same place, and that, just the one man in dark covers it all off. There's the pause. TSM get themselves... It was their first CT round. Yes, it was. On the board. 11-8. 10-5 first half for TSM on the T side. It's already a pretty good start for Penta, but uh, now we're going to start seeing. As you said, that was the first rifle round. That was the one that counted. And it's TSM that won it in a 4-5. on five. Yeah, and considering their player dropped out, that's fairly indicative, isn't it? You know what I mean? If they can still close out rounds like that, kind of worrying. But, you know, Penta now have to kind of do what was done to them. Just, you know, turn up, be able to close out those T rounds, play off those executes. I'd like to see them do like a full A. They seem to get fairly close towards A. I didn't like that connect play when they put four players there with no seemingly way to really push beyond it. It just felt like, okay, well, we didn't expect to get this much control of mid, and now we're kind of stuck here. But anyway, Cajun B's back with us, so the game should begin very soon. And the economy for Penta isn't completely broken. They can still get a shoddy buy if they want it, and we'll have to see what they go for. Yeah, they they won enough rounds that they can buy straight up on this one. They're, uh, they should be fine. Cajun B is going to get bought a scout, it looks like. So, we'll see where he takes that one. Carrigan, though, with the AWP. He's going to be the man that looks like to be going towards the window. Cajun B, I'm pretty sure Cajun B is going to go over towards B van. We'll see. Game back underway. Crystal's got himself an orb, so they have gone for the full buy, full ah, uh, his glass cannon actually, I was about to say full armor. Crystal's gone full glass cannon, he's going to challenge the window, Carrigan's going to be looking. That grenade could do a lot of damage, remember, no health, there it is. 41 health left on Crystal, the grenade straight on top of him. But it doesn't matter when you got a big orb in your hand. Yeah, Dupree pushing out as well at a ramp is going to mean that they've kind of got control here, they know that everyone else is either mid or B. Hence why Cajun B and Zipnix are already on that B side together. They've got device folks on towards mid. Staros does take down Cajun, but they know Zipnix has been playing B, so there's still at least someone else there that's present. And well, let's see how they play this one out. I'd like to see Pender almost go for a switch up again, but it looks like they want to take themselves towards this B site, and hopefully for Zipnix's sake, he can hold on to this. Yeah, Dupree and Tamsin just having a little duel all the way down connector, but they both backed off from that one. Device actually holding the window there, expecting Dupree. Both of them expecting something to push up there. They're not covering this one off too well. Device is the only man staring at that window. Zipnix is only on short, though, so he can easily come back in. Penta, well, they're having second thoughts. 30 seconds to go, and they're going for a That's full right. rotate all the way over to our rotate site. What's giving it away as well? Because Device has rotated. I, well, I don't know how the hell they did, know. I don't know. Zipnix maybe hear them at short? That's the only thing I can think of. But I, I don't know. And Device is so sure the bomb's coming this way. So sure of it. He's certain. He's come around. Dupree's still here, waiting and pouncing and delivering. That's all he needed to do. He waited till the last six seconds of that round to come into play. And Stavros can't even get to the bomb in time. And Penta almost should have just stuck with that B execute. Yeah, that was... I mean, they, they obviously saw something. I'd love to see what gave it away, what maybe just a single footstep heard, but it was enough to uh, just immediately commit all their resources. They didn't really need to do it, Dupree, mm. in dark. It's one of those things we highlighted, obviously, in the pre-show, how Mouse were checking the angles on everything on Mirage, but Penta, they didn't have the time to check all the angles. They didn't have the time to check every position. They had to get in and get the plant down. And it's what's cost them. Just a single AK for Stavros. Saved it in the last round. Oh, that grenade's not going to do a great deal of trouble. He already so, so low. Dupree 
Smith's not going to realise how close he was to catching three heads there. <laughs> it's always, it's always. If only they could see what we see sometimes, because they are literally like on the player. Well, device knows he's on that one. Dupree folds in, and that's a nice clean up for TSM. But once again, I, I don't think these two teams, well, should I say Penta on their pistols, can really get that close to TSM. Even on the other side, they didn't really make all that impact on it. Yeah. But on their gun rounds, they're getting fairly close, but sometimes they just seem to like triple guess themselves and kind of overcomplicate the situation and get caught out. But we're seeing a fully bought up Penta. No AWP, though, so Chris is going to have to go for that AK. Um, but Carrigan actually running the AWP this time. I'm not sure if he just had a better spawn or he just wants to take it towards mid. And actually, there's three players there. That nade mm. catching strikes well, and Carrigan now under pressure. Look how much they read it. Device and Dupree both came straight down connector. They knew what was coming this time around. They immediately got themselves in position, collected themselves up some kills. And Penta, well, their little mid play has been stopped dead. Trouble, though, is just creeping his way up. Nobody on A site just yet. Now they're looking towards him from jungle. This Device has got his eye on him. And that's all that we needed. Dupree, he's up close and personal with Crystal. Crystal trying to peek his way around. Oh, and that's Stavros gone down and B. And look at the difference here when TSM away or you know, go up short. There was there was maybe one player in window and one player at stairs. For Penta, when it's TSM on the other foot, you see two players in connector, one in window, or even you know, one in jungle, one in connector, one in window. They're they're so quick on locking down those small kind of gaps. And I wish we'd seen more of that from Penta, just putting players into these positions and giving them the chance for it. But now Penta having to force into what they can, really. You know, they've got mollies with the Tech Nines. They've got a big buy here, so they might try and do a full execute with it, but without the rifles. Yeah, just try and rush headlong in. They're oh, going to flash themselves the through. Molly, the molly. Device and Dupree, the molly just burning them down, and Device in dark dropping all he can. Dupree makes it 30 kills in the game so far. That's going to be 31. That's 32. Oh, Cajun B, you stole it. <laughs> 31 in the end. Massive stuff from TSM. 15 8s, what we expected, no doubt about it. Penta struggling to collect the rounds here on the T side. And well, that's almost match point. Penta having to force into this one with whatever they can afford. This is the put everything into the pot and let's try and pull it together. What I want to see from them is almost those kind of smart executions or smart plays, but just. Just keep, you know, have confidence in themselves in a way. They seem to just slow it down, get caught up in whatever TSM throw in as like initial um, spanner in the works, and then Penta kind of crumble into this a uh, little bit of a, a little bit of a mess. And so they've done. So trouble is waiting by A. Crystal tried to peek out against Device late, which wasn't going to work very well. Tabs is now kind of stuck in the same predicament. He's done better though, but then Device also kills him. And now you can see just Penta just seemingly almost broken here, just piece by piece, falling into the hands of TSM. And sadly, even though there's some great individual moments from Penta, they just weren't strong enough to convert into full, fully fledged hard rounds. They've never really been, like you say, it's, it's all about the individual skill. They're often not going in, like it's, we can see Trouble making a great play there, but Strux is on the other side of the map. So while he's managed to work his way and get a kill. There's no revenge, there's no follow-up. Oh, did Cajun see him then, or is he just changing? Mm, he did this time. That's going to be game point. And TSM will take it in an expected format there. So, 16-8, the final score. Dominant stuff from TSM. Now the real challenge begins. I think we can move on. No reason to over-analyze that one, other than say, Penta, still got some work to do. They're just not on the same level as TSM. It's it's very clear they're, you know, tier two, three team TSM are pushing the yeah. higher echelons of tier one. You're not going to get uh, a close game. You know, Mouse Sports, on the other hand, have potential to rise quickly and push teams who are maybe slightly off form. I wouldn't say TSM are off form. They may have games that they drop occasionally, mm. but they are certainly still very much on form. Very much one of the number one teams. Well, they're about to challenge the number one team. I think it's still, I think it's safe, safe to say Fnatic's still the number one team. Yeah. They just went and won the uh, Gfinity, so that yeah. is going to be our next match, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a cracker, and you're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be Fnatic versus TSM after the break. <laughs>